it's so nice out. Let's go over to Snow Badger and get some work done. Finally back with Snow Badger after 15 days in a row. Oh, there he is. The guy's gonna help out. You guys know where we're at back with PHP. We got a lot we gotta do today. We wanna get the new oil pump in. We wanna get the new tensioner in, new alternator, get all that stuff done. Then we gotta go get a new build just to make sure everything's gonna be good to go with it. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and take all this stuff apart so then uh, Brandon can put the new oil pump in to make sure it's good to go. So let's go ahead and get it done. <laughs> So we got everything out of the way here. All the bolts are still on there. I'm gonna have Brandon take a look at everything that's on this, that's on that bolt's on there. Oh, I think that was our problem. There's a gap right there. I think that's where we were losing oil pressure. It was right down there. Pretty sure Brandon was right. Well, we took the oil pump off and everything looked all right until we pulled the O-ring. And you see, it is broke. So with that being said, that's why I was losing oil pressure. And now that we were gonna fix this and we got a, oops, see if we can focus. Got a better pump now. Now we're gonna jump up to the higher pump because that's just a 10296, which is, I think, uh, standard volume high pressure, but now we're gonna go high pressure, high volume made for boosted applications as well, which is the 355 HV that Brandon's gonna bring over, put on there for me the right way, and then torque everything down. So let's go and get that on. So we put, also I had the wrong O-ring on there. The red one was on there, but it's supposed to be a black one because the end of the pickup tube that goes into the pump was the red or orange one. It was supposed to be the black one because it's not a tapered one. So now what uh, he's doing, what Brandon's doing is he's priming the oil pump, getting oil all through it first with that oil. And then he's gonna go ahead and put that on. I'll get everything bolted. Well, then we'll torque it down, get everything bolted up and then we'll start it. Run the coolant through it, make sure everything's good. Also when you're installing these, Brandon said that you actually turn the engine over so you can center the pump before you tighten. So like all the four bolts that go around it, you just bring them close, but don't actually snug it up. And then you turn the pump to make sure that you center the uh, oil pump and then you'll be good to go. <laughs> crank on heat up a little bit make it expand will slide better over top in the crank so that's what we're gonna do get this on with snow badger last night we finished up putting the new oil pump in got the water pump got the new alternator in there um, i'm also going to clock the wastegate over this way and have it follow the intake tube because the new tensioner is going to sit right here and then if i have this it's going to be in the way as you see that's all lined up 
So I'm gonna try to clock this around so that we can get the new one on there and be done. Also, the way I figured out that the water pump was not really working is because Brandon saw that underneath here, the belt was only touching here. So when I got into boost or whatever, it was just slipping past. So that's why it was going up. So or the coolant temperature was going up. Also, another reason why I knew that this was starting to go because one of the guys that I work with is an electrical engineer. He was telling me that you shouldn't be running alternators more than 80% of what their duty cycle is. And that was at 100% because this was getting hot. And if you also see on here, the coils in there is what it's supposed to look like. Mine are burnt. So this was getting really hot. I was overdoing it and alternators are not supposed to get hot. So it was causing uh, charging problems. So right now I'm going to go ahead, get the wastegate situated, get the new belt put on, which I got to go get. And then we'll be able to start this up, put coal in it, make sure everything's good to go. And we can drive this around see how it goes. Maybe get some draggy data. So let's get to it. All right guys, so I have the ICT billet tensioner, manual tensioner on there, and I didn't really like that, and neither did Brandon. So I bought a auto adjusting one that I'm gonna put on there, and also have a 71 and a half inch belt to go around, and that's gonna give us our loop around the water pump a lot more. And then once that's on, I'll connect cable off of the alternator down to the starter so we get the charging. And that's up right now. I might take that off and put when I put the other tension on to see how it works. But right now, let's go ahead and get that on and see how everything works out. Belt's all in there, that's tight. Got it up over that pulley, was made to do. There's more uh, belt on the water pump now, so that works out, which is good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the intake tube on, which is sitting over there. Then I'm gonna get the new wire put on, which I got a two gauge there. It's gonna run down across the K-member and then over to the starter. We'll get that done when that's finished. We'll go ahead and fill this up with coolant. We're gonna back it out and then we're gonna let it run and see how it does. So let's go ahead and get all that stuff situated. All right, so we had a little mishap with it. See the new alternators back on, or the old alternators back on because the new one, the exciter wire plug or terminal back here was bent in. So every single time I connected the battery back there, it was getting so hot that it made the battery uh, negative glow super red. And then now that's fused down there. I replaced it. So we're gonna go and try it again. We got cooling it in and everything. So we wanna make sure everything's good to go. And, every, and even the coolant is staying cool. And then I'm gonna call to get a new alternator. So let's go ahead and get this thing started and get all the air bled out of this coolant system. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna crank it for 15 seconds to build up oil pressure. And then we'll reconnect the injectors and then go and do that. All right, send it. All 
All right, so right now what we're doing is we're looking over three and a half inch display to see all the gauges and it's not idling right. Like it keeps going down into like initial and then coming back up in the RPM. It's not doing our target RPMs at 800. It's right around four to six. And then also on the Terminator itself, flashing some uh, lights that I didn't know that I had to look up, but we did turn it back off and I turned it back on and that cleared everything as well. So uh, keep going with this. So if you just heard that little rev, how it kind of like went up, did like a little stutter and came back down and almost stalled out, that's what we were battling on the Terminator X system right now. It was confusing what was going on. Um, I thought maybe I took, I didn't plug in the crank signal sensor in all the way. So after I turned it off, I did all that, did fix everything. I didn't know that was going on. I didn't know to check the ECU as well. So what I'm doing now is I'm going around and checking for any vacuum leaks. I'm going off of the distribution block up there. I'm checking the blow off valve, um, hose. I'm looking at the hose on the wastegate, checking anywhere there could be a vacuum line that could be missing or coming off that's not affecting our idle problem right now. So like I said before, we also brought it out here to get a coolant situation. So I put some coolant in. What Brandon's doing now is he's touching the upper radiator hose, which he's squeezing it, to try to push a lot of the air pockets and air bubbles out of the cooling system while I go around and still figure out if we have any air leaks because of that, that distribution block could cause any problems because I was having some problems with it before. So now we're going to go back and take a look at everything of what's going on. I'm just looking at the monitor through the windshield to see what uh, what's going on with the coolant and also the oil pressure. I don't know if you could hear me, but at this point I realized that the Terminator X ECU, which is engine control unit, was flashing red, I believe on number 7 light. Because usually I only have 1, 2, 3, and 4 lights on, but number 7 was flashing and that's an indication of no crank signal. So that would explain why I was idling so rough and down to the four to 600 RPM. So now I'm going to go ahead and fix that problem. Alright, so the oil pressure is around 45 to 50, but it's idling weird. Um, I didn't change anything out with that. Um, the Terminator X system, number two on the lights was flashing, well, it was going green, and then it would flash like a quick yellow in the stop. Uh, six was steady red, so I gotta see what's going on with that. And then seven just kept flashing, so I'm gonna go ahead and look that up and see what's going on and then we'll come back to this. All right, well, I started it back up again, and now all the lights are good to go on here. Uh, the line filter is sync. Let's go look at the gauges. Like, everything else sounds good, looks good. Yeah, this looks a lot better. Press that 3940 is idling good. 40, 41, 42. Let's see what else 
it'll go up to when I rev it. Checking on the uh, coolant up there to make sure all that's good to go because at 161 it looks okay. All right, so it's been about eight minutes. Oil pressure went down to 32, 33, and 31. The coolant temps at 192. That's great. It's been eight minutes and it hasn't gone above that. Well, it has, but steady. And everything else looks good. Bolts are great. So we'll see what happens. Back in Slow Badger for day three. I started up two times and you see all these green ones were on, but the other time I had the red on there and then a red there and now it's flashing. So I just had to push everything back in. The line filter is good down there. You know what? Let's just go ahead and drive this home and see how it does. Well, Snow Badger's doing pretty good. Now I know that third gear. At 60 mile an hour, it's roughly about 3,000 RPMs. And all the other uh, gauges look good. Well, of course, the drawbridge is closed right now. And Snow Badger jumped up to 225 degrees. So I gotta wait until that goes and let Snow Badger cool down. Like, damn it. <laughs> and I can't go in reverse because I don't have the trans brake hooked up. So now I gotta sit here and wait for that to go. Yeah, well, I'm fucked. Snow Badger doesn't start. Battery's dead. Like always. All right, some really nice guys just helped me out back there. Uh, they lived in a blood bar back there. I didn't get their names, <laughs> so if you watch the channel, comment below. I appreciate it, and hopefully this gets me all the way home. Thank you, guys. There's nothing worse than getting stuck behind a truck. <clears throat> One of the coolant temps at 234, and I'm just trying to move so I can get air. Like, this really sucks. And then the oil pressure is going back down to what it used to be. Down there in the bottom right, and I don't know why. And it's it's not good. You put a bigger, put a bigger pump. Oh good, he's turning. Alright, let's keep going. Just when I thought everything was getting better, we're going down just as fast. So, drove it back from Brandon's shop about an hour, and uh, oil pressure's going down. So that oil pressure, when it's at idle, is at 78, 7 to 8 PSI, which is not good at all. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna drain all the oil out, see if there's any metal in it, and make sure everything's good to go because if there's no metal in it, then we don't know what's really going on. Besides, we gotta take the whole thing apart and got another engine that we can put in this. But right now, if there is metal in it, which that would be a good thing, maybe the main bearings, which is the bearings that the crank sits in as the crank rotates around, or the rod bearings is what the connecting rods, so you got your pistons, connecting rods, and the connecting rods attached to the crank. So either the connecting rod bearings or the main bearings are starting to go. So now I'm gonna get Snow Badger down to the shop here, get up on jack stands, I'm gonna check the oil in it and make sure everything is gonna be good or not. I really, it'd be nice if it wasn't, 
because then we can get a better engine in here. But then if it is good, I don't know what Brandon's next step is for this. We're gonna have to tear it apart and figure out what's going on. But it's weird because the pump we have in there, the oil pump, it's one of the badass oil pumps on the market. Like we should be pushing at idle 30 to 40 PSI and then maybe under boost be upwards of 60 to 70. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this back down there. We'll be good to go. You guys wanna come help? Okay, let's go help.